Hi, I'm Rob D from Property Hub, here with Rob B to tell you everything you need to know about property tax. Yeah, don't switch off, tax is important. You wanna keep some of your money, right? Well, in this video, we'll teach you how. There's a slogan that says tax shouldn't be taxing, but with the amount of taxes in property, it seems it is a little. Let's look at some of the taxes that you may have to pay. The first one is stamp duty. So if you're a buy-to-let investor or just buying a property yourself, you're going to have to pay stamp duty. There's no guessing around it. So you're gonna to have to factor that in. Now, the price of your property will determine how much stamp duty you're going to pay. The percentage increases the more expensive your property is. These tax bands and the amount you have to pay is often changed by government. So check on the HMRC website to see how much stamp duty you'll be liable for or search for a stamp duty calculator. Now, as a buy-to-let investor, you're going to have to pay tax on your earnings. Now, if you purchase your property as an individual, the profits will be taxed as income tax. So just like a job, you get income, well, your buy-to-let will give you income and you will be taxed on that. But many buy-to-let investors now invest through a limited company. So the tax you'll pay on your profits there is corporation tax, which is lower. But a word of warning, if you then take some of the profits that company makes and pay yourself, you'll then pay income tax again. So if you haven't decided yet, if you're going to be investing as an individual or through a limited company, make sure you get good tax advice that you set yourself up right from the beginning. And finally, if you think you're taxed out, well, wait, there's more. If you sell your property, then you may have to pay capital gains tax. You do have an allowance each year, but depending on the amount of profit you make, you may be liable for some tax there as well. So there's tax when you buy it, tax while you hold it, and tax when you sell it. Taxes all over. And for property investors, it gets a little bit worse because there's a special way tax was applied that came in a few years ago called Section 24, which is something you might have heard about because it's quite a big deal because it means that income from property investments gets taxed differently from any other kind of business income. The short version is that while any other business can deduct its financing costs as an expense before calculating its profits, property investors can't. So you end up paying tax on your real profits plus the amount that you paid out in mortgage interest minus a 20% deduction on your mortgage interest that you're allowed to claim. That's the quick version, but it's a complicated concept and it's unfamiliar to most people because it's not the kind of thing you come across in any other type of business. So if you look in the description, you'll find a link to a more detailed explanation if you're interested. Worth noting, Rob said earlier that many investors now invest through limited companies. That's because these new Section 24 rules do not apply to companies. And that's why in many situations, investing through a company is now more beneficial. So that's all the bad news when it comes to tax. And yes, there is a lot of it, but there's some good news as well. You can deduct a lot of costs before you arrive at the final amount of profit that you get taxed on. So you'll encounter letting agent fees, insurance, service charges, maintenance costs, utility bills maybe, mileage, and even any training and education that you do in property. All of those costs can be deducted before you arrive at the final profit figure that you pay tax on. And it's very important that you claim all of that that you possibly can. If there's anything that you forget to claim, you're paying more tax than you need to. There is a separate category of costs that you can't claim against your profit each year. And that relates to costs involved in purchasing the property in the first place or improving its condition. So for example, any solicitor's fees that you incur in the purchase, or if you build an extension on the property, which will be an improvement. Any costs like that can't be claimed each year. They can only be claimed when you sell to reduce the amount of capital gains tax that you have to pay. So when you're noting down all your costs, you need to categorize them into ones that you can claim now against your profit and ones that you need to file away, but make sure you don't lose so you can claim them when the time comes in the distant future to sell. So, how can you reduce your tax bill? Well, first of all, decide if you need to invest through a limited company. Now, you may not know this, and most people don't. You're gonna to need to get some advice, so make sure you work with a good accountant. The next thing you can do is split income smartly between partners. If you earn different amounts, then it can make a big difference on who gets paid what. As Rob's already said, claim everything you can. And I mean everything. Don't slip here, don't get lazy. You're taxed enough, so make sure you get back what you're owed. So with so much tax in so many different places, you could think, oh, is property investment worth it? But it is. But you can end up paying more than you need to. 
A good accountant shouldn't be seen as a cost. It's a fantastic investment because good and great accountants will save you more than you pay them, significantly more. So whether you're investing already and you're questioning, have you got yourself set up correctly or you're about to begin, if you haven't had tax advice yet, get some. So there you go. Tax isn't dull. And in fact, saving money is pretty cool. Yep, and one decision that shouldn't be taxing is the one to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything else from this channel.